I created you out of stardust and breathed life into you. I placed you in a country and in a family which nurtured your body and intellect. I gave you your healthy body, and I want it back. God waved her elegant hand of light. Suddenly the man felt weak. He slowly sat down on a bench, not feeling so good. Then God said, I also gave you your talent to do your job, and I ensured that you would get the job that you have. Your job and your ability to do it me. I'm not taking them back. With a wave of her hand, she announced, you are no longer employed. Your career is over. The man looked stunned. And since you're no longer employed, God continued, you no longer have this great house, new car, or your money. You possess them only because I gave you the ability to earn them. Again, the dreaded wage and its house and car disappeared. And finally, God said, I also gave you your lovely spouse and your children. They exist because I created them. They are your life because I allowed you to be together. But I'm going to take them back to you. Your hand waved. The man suddenly felt a great emptiness. Wait, the man shouted. What are you talking about? Why would you do this? This is madness. Without my health, job, possessions, and especially my family, I have nothing. I am nothing. Please don't do this to me. God then paused and looked at the man with great love. I'll tell you what, she said. I'll give you back my stuff to borrow. Only you need to do some things for me. Anything, the man begged. Okay, God said. I need you to volunteer at the food pantry twice a month. And since it will make it easier for you to get there if you have a car, I now return your car to you. The car we have parked here in the driveway. And I want you to host Bible study in your living room. And since it will be easier to do this if you live in a permanent location, I now will let you borrow a home. His home appeared on the lot. And since you will need to be strong enough to do these things, I will let you borrow your help. The man suddenly felt well and strong. I also want you to financially support the church and other organizations promote the realm of God. Since you will need an income to pay for these things, I will give you your former job. The man can sense that he was once again. <clears throat> and finally, I want you to live a life of compassion and loving kindness with all of humanity. And in order to practice this, and in order for them to have someone to practice on, I will return your family, which I created for you. I waved her hand, and it was so. The man was enormously relieved to have his former life back. Thank you for letting me have everything back, but, but why did you do this? The man asked. Because, my child, God answered with tenderness and love. While I have no wish to see you suffer, I did need you to see more clearly the nature of your relationship with your life. Nothing is yours. Even the ability to earn money is because I gave it to you. Nobody lifts themselves up by their bootstraps. Deuteronomy, you were told, do not say to yourself, my power and the might of my hand have gotten me this wealth. But remember the Lord your God, for 
it is she who gives you power to get them. Realization dawned in man's eyes. God continued, there is an expectation that you will use what I've given you for the benefit not only of yourself, but for others. And for whatever it is, you can support the realm of God. God placed a gentle hand on his cheek. And suddenly the man felt full of energy, ten years younger. Go in peace. Steward your gifts. Give generously in ways which give life. I will always love you. She's gone. Man returned home in joy to his end. So you may have guessed from that little fable, today is the kickoff for our stewardship season. And this is an important season because money is a spiritual topic. Heard me right. Money is a spiritual topic. Other than the kingdom of God, Jesus talks more about money in the Bible than any other subject. This is because what we do with wealth, and by that, whether it be money, power, talent, influence, or anything else that comes to us through the grace of God, what we do with our wealth shows where our heart is. Stewardship is not simply the time of the year where the parish tells you to pay up so we can keep the lights on, although that is a part of the story. The season, rather, is a gift which annually reminds us to assess what is important to us and to respond accordingly. What do we want to do with what we have been given? It's a big question. One of the places we encourage you to give is to the parish. In fact, throughout scripture, we are encouraged to give 10% of our income to the temple or to the church. That 10% is called the tithe. Today's little fable was to clarify that God is not asking us to give 10% of our money to the church, but rather, God is allowing us to keep 90% of his money for ourselves. That 10% was never ours to begin with. The first time I tithed, that I gave 10% of my income to the church, it was a leap of faith and fear. I was a poor priest, my husband was a graduate student, and Duncan was a baby. But we managed. And as the years went by, I found tithing to be a liberating spiritual practice, a trusting I continued giving 10% of my income to the church, I confess, until Duncan entered college, but I dropped it to 5%. I currently give Emmanuel 5% of my income, and next year I'm bumping it up to 5.5%. By the time Jax graduates from college, I want to be back up to 10%. Of course, not everyone can tithe. But many can, and most of us can at least work towards it. For instance, if you currently give 3% of your income to Emmanuel, see if for next year you can go up to 4%, and so on. And if you are not currently giving financially, please consider budgeting. I cannot underscore how important pledging is for the running of the parish. Remember, if your circumstances change, you can always change your pledge. It's not a contract. It's an educated guess. But even a modest pledge makes all the difference in helping us project what we can afford in the coming year. 
So I invite you to please use this time between now and Sunday, October 31st, or in gathering Sunday, to reflect and to pray on what Emmanuel means to you and what amount you are able to pledge. All we are and all that we have is a gift from God. invite you to stand, if able, as we affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, Light to light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Ed, Ed Sr., and Eddie Guy Jr. 
Caldwell and Armstrong fans. JC, JD, JW, Jeanette, John, Scott Johnson, Samantha Nibbs, Angela Coates, Sandy McGee, Holly Madmore, Jack McTeague, Michael, Becky Miller, Jimmy Boyer, Vicki Bowman, Joseph Oliveri, Jim O'Reilly, Lisa Pappas, Lois Peterson, John Wilmore, John F. Ross, Sheila, Ryan Smith, Meredith Suter, Bill and Jan Walsh, Bob Weatherly, Eric and Vicki Bigat, advisor, Carl Wickstrom, and Marie Zanelli and the Zanelli family. The name to the departed eternal rest. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. We also want to share Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people, strengthen us to do your will. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in all word and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with all our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us. And the name of life is your will, we will offer you your face, and to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you.
we like, one of the things they want are stuffed animals. So we like to bring a new or gently used stuffed animal to be blessed, and we can give it to the Syrian refugee children. That would be helpful. Um, also, uh, another thing, our nominating committee. We're looking for people to be willing to serve on the nominating committee. It's fairly light duty. It's probably like one meeting on Zoom, and then we'll just commute, uh, connect by email. But we're looking to gather names for the coming slate to be voted on at the annual meeting. So it's a short term serve. And if you feel so called, please speak to me or one of the boards. Also, we're updating the prayer list. There are a bunch of names on the prayer list that predate both Lisa and me. We don't know who these people are. We would like to know. They're listed in the epistle, which you should get every Friday. If you're not getting the epistle, let us know what you can list. But do look it over and see if you know any of the names that are there. We don't know their origin. Are there other announcements? Yes, yes, come, please come up. I invite everyone to do announcements from here so that the uh, people at home can see you on the camera. Okay. Morning, everyone. Uh, just a brief impromptu uh, update from the search committee. Uh, so we're getting ready to hold a, a series of focus groups in mid to late October. Uh, we'll have we'll have some in person. We'll have some, <coughs> and in order to make sure that we can actually schedule properly to find times that work for people, but also that work for the people who are going to be running them, uh, everybody should have gotten a survey in their in their mailbox uh, very fast. Four questions should take you five minutes to fill out. Can, if you can please fill that out um, by Friday of this coming week, that will really help us in, in doing some scheduling. And also, too, um, if you are a parent of, uh, of you know, now an, an adult who, as a child, came to me, if you think that your child would actually be willing to participate in a focus group over Zoom, uh, and you'd be willing to forward that that survey to them, that would be that would be fantastic. Much appreciated. Thanks. Great. Other announcements. Andrew. Hello, everyone. Um, so as Stephanie said, this is our um, kickoff for our stewardship. I want to thank everybody who took the time to um, answer the surveys that we put out based on faith, spirit, and community. We made a word cloud dub out of it, and it's quite lovely. Um, now I realize I need to get a poster for it so you all can see it. But it will be on all the correspondence that you receive from us, so please take a look at it. It is, it is meaningful. Um, years ago, we started in September, and we ought to wait for it for a while, so we wanted to push that back again and get this going. The good news is it's not going on forever until um, in gathering, which used to be the Sunday before Thanksgiving, during Halloween. And um, that is for a lot of reasons, um, and most of it is because we just we have to get budget together. Um, Neil is still pouring over numbers like over Christmas or New Year's, past little Christmas, and you know, budgeting it is taking you know almost four or five months, which is um, not fair to the Neil guy. He's so wonderful and amazing at the job. We're so lucky to have him. Um, and then the first mailing went out on Wednesday afternoon. I haven't received mine yet, so I don't know who has. Um, oh, good. Um, and you'll see the dub there. And then the second reading one with the pledge cards go out on Columbus Day weekend around there. And you can even email me. Most of the best you have already pledged. So we're excited about this and getting, um, you know, not only keeping the church on, but keeping the ministries going and keeping the things that make church meaningful to us going. And um, so I just want to thank you for your time and thank you for your pledge. And I wish you all a wonderful day. It was a beautiful day. Thank you.
Thank you, Andrea. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Things come of thee, O Lord. Your service continues in the bulletin. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. And a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, by its glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
After supper, he took a cup of wine. When he gave him thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this with the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal all this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
feeling that us Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. You have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into a world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you for gladness and singleness of heart. For Christ our Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and those you love this day and always. Amen. Amen.